Okay, we're back. We're live at Stinktech, and it's Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And we have a megawatt moment today. We're always happy to have a megawatt moment. So Ray Starling and I are, are going to talk to Keith Block of Hawaii Energy about a special project at UH, which is kind of like a pilot project, I guess, in, in, on the long the way to net zero at the university. Very exciting. Tell us about the project, Keith. Well, it's their new frog building, so flexible response to ongoing growth. That's one of those great acronyms. Right, life, I, yeah. I, that's why yeah, I love that one. But the idea being, uh, if I have a modular, you know, already pre-designed uh, classroom, and I have growth and I need to put a new classroom in, I can just drop in a classroom already pre-designed that's net zero. So it means you know you don't have to worry about your infrastructure, or, you know, being able to handle new construction or all, because the building itself is actually net zero. So uh, really exciting. We I, we brought a video of the grand opening, and it's got some great uh, technologies in it. Really thick uh, double pane windows, so highly insulated, uh, high efficiency fans to move air so that you feel cooler without the air conditioner. It's really designed for natural ventilation, so it's, uh, it does have an air conditioner, but the air conditioner, you actually have to want the air conditioner, you gotta go manually turn it on, and it only stays on for an hour, and after it goes off, you gotta decide again. Is it the, oh, here's the video right the now. Video, okay. So there's the high efficiency fan, so yeah, okay. move a lot of air with very little energy, so hopefully you feel cool without the air conditioner on. Mm -hmm. Those are the lights, those are LED lights that are, um, very uh, uh, tunable, uh, they dim when they're close to the window. See this one close to the window. Uh, you got natural light coming in, so those ones will dim while the ones in the middle of the room will be on brighter so that you can see where you're not getting any uh, outdoor light in. Um, there's uh, David Lasner. David Lasner, there he is. Yeah, he was. He must love this project. Yeah, he was talking about his, the goal for the whole UH system, but this is a great step in the right direction because it's a net energy zero. Well, that's classroom. the outside the building. Uh, yeah, it's not a really big building, but you can see it was designed for natural ventilation. Here's a display that's in, in the classroom that allow the students to actually see how much energy the classroom is using at any one point in time, and whether it's you know um, lighting or is it energy being used by the air conditioner or the fans or so it has a lot of uh, stuff in there for the students to actually learn from the buildings as well. But really designed to be comfortable without air conditioning, so. Ah, good job, you know. This is uh, the kind of thing we'd love to see at the university. And HNEI, Hawaii National Energy Institute, is involved in this? Yeah, they were the ones that got the grant that allowed them to do this program. So the grant came from the Office of Naval Research. Um, you know, it, it was sort of expensive because it's a one-off right now, but the yeah, idea right. is, you know, once we prove the concept, then it's just a modular solution. So anytime I need a new classroom, drop one of these in. I don't have to think about it, and it comes to energy efficiency. Not level. limited to UH. could be high schools, could be elementary schools. Absolutely, anyone. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's and, the and idea. Then a key, the idea of modular means not only is it energy efficient, but you can move it around and get the same efficiency anywhere. Right. So you take it from one school to the other, one island to the other, whatever. Yeah. And they're talking throughout the Pacific Basin, you know, so Guam, you know, any place that has, you know, a need for a, a new classroom, but, you know, maybe is concerned about infrastructure, can drop in a classroom that's net zero. So you're watching it like a hawk, right? It's yeah, well, we, we were pretty excited about it. So, I, you know, I was like kid in the candy store out there for me because it's got all this cool <laughs> technology. So it was very exciting to go out and actually take a look at these classrooms. Okay, Ray, your witness. I got a question. You said it was net zero. Uh, I know it's very efficient, but uh, you do use some electricity. So how do you produce that? Is that a panels on the top? Yeah, and, and that was the one flying the ointment right now. They don't have the panels on right now. Okay. So yeah, but the idea but is... But it's designed to take yeah. care of its 100% of its needs. Right. So the yeah, the PV system, once they get it installed, will completely offset the, the energy right. that they use throughout the, the rest of the day or throughout the night in that classroom. Okay. Great. And that'll be that. Once they put the PV on, you get net zero. We can achieve that right now with this one more element of the, uh, the, the PV on the roof. Right. And, and two classrooms that actually prove that point, you know. And, and they've got a tremendous amount of metering on it, so they know this is true. You know, they're studying it quite a bit. Great, Keith. Thanks for coming down and showing it to us. It's like a great project. Thanks for bringing the video, too. Yeah, no, we'll, thanks for inviting me. We'll see you again soon, right? I hope so. Keith Block, Hawaii Energy. 
We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to to talk about STEM. We're going to talk about black boxes. We're going to talk about storage, all those really important things to put the utility together with the, the homeowner. We'll be right back. Aloha. My name is Reg Baker, and I'm the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're a show that broadcasts live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30. We highlight success stories in Hawaii of both businesses and individuals. We learn their secrets to success, which is always valuable. I hope to see you on our next show. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Chantal Seville, the host of the Savvy Chick Show. You can watch the show every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Honolulu time and enjoy how to be inspired and empowered. If you're a woman or girl, everyone is welcome, but it's really dedicated to you. And we look forward to seeing you. You can also find us on thinktechhawaii.com. See you soon. Aloha. Hello, this is Martin Despang. I want to get you get excited about my new show, which is Humane Architecture for Hawaii and Beyond. We're going to broadcast on Tuesdays, 5 p.m. here on uh, Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha, my name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. And I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome. We are co-hosts of a show called Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech Live Network series, weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We're looking forward to seeing you then. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Richard Emery, and I host Condo Insider. We talk about issues facing the Condo Association throughout Hawaii and talk about solutions. When you think about it, about one-third of our population lives in some form of common interest real estate. We broadcast every Thursday at 3 p.m. Please tune in. Tune in and thank you. Aloha. Aloha and welcome to the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm the weekly host at 11 a.m. Honolulu time. Very excited for the next six weeks. We have the Aspire series, which is all about the coolest careers I could find and interviewing and getting insights from these amazing people who want to share it with you and help you live your dreams. Look forward to seeing you on the show. Aloha. Hey, Stan Energy Man here. Make sure you tune in on my lunch hour every Friday from noon until 12.30 at least. Maybe I'll go a little long if you got good stuff to, to share with you. But we'll talk about energy, all kinds of energy. My favorite is hydrogen, and my favorite, other favorite is transportation and hydrogen. But we'll talk about all kinds of energy. Be with us every Friday at noon. Stan Energy Man. Aloha. Start. Okay, we're back. We're live. That's Ray Starling. How about a shot of Ray? There's Ray, co-host. Oh, yeah. Oh. Here in Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And our special guest tonight, ladies before men, uh, Dora Nakafuji from Hawaiian Electric. She's an engineer, can you tell? <laughs> and Tad Glothier uh, from STEM, which is a company that does very sophisticated programming black boxes things connects all the pieces which we need so badly and i think you have her attention <laughs> we try to we're trying to make it simple not not too complicated okay that's why i'm going to let you talk first what is it <laughs> it's you know what we do is a battery system that lowers the uh, peakiness of the electricity use of a building so that that building is a, a, a lower electricity bill uh, but we also make sure that the batteries that we put into buildings are used by the grid and help that building owner become a better grid citizen. So our battery systems are always serving two purposes. They serve a purpose for their host and a, and a purpose for the grid. BGC, BGC, better grid citizens. Better grid citizens. <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> it's all in the software, right? It, it is, the, you know, that's, um, that sounds easy, but it's, uh, that's oh, kind of the name not. of the game in the storage industry yeah. is what we call stacking value streams. How do you do two things at once and, you know, actually show up to deliver each thing you said you were going to do? Uh, there's a lot of statistics. We've got a little team of statisticians and, and people just, you know, doing math in the back room trying to make sure that that happens right and we don't overcommit to either, either customer. Well, you're, you're walking a tightrope. We're going to get to Hawaiian Electric's viewpoint on this. <laughs> You're walking a tightrope because you're dealing with, it's mostly real time. Even if it's a pilot, it's real time. And you, you can't afford to fall off this tightrope. You've got to be right. You can't make mistakes because they'll be on you if you make mistakes. So how do you avoid that? Do you sleep at night, Ted? 
<laughs> I do. <laughs> Luckily, we, we have this thing called the cloud, and it just takes care of everything. It's on 24 hours a day. Oh, swell. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, that, that is, you know, I, I'm, I'm only half joking. Our, our systems are, um, they're all fully automatic, and they're run by a local control computer, but they're also in connection to the cloud. So when they're just operating for that business, they're under control of their host computer, but when there's a grid event, we have a cloud-based operating system. We say, hey, the, the grid needs support from, from all the batteries that are available, and it takes a check, and it says, these batteries are available. Okay, we're going to have those batteries respond to this grid event. So one more thing. Now that we've established this is a software play, where does the software live, and, and, what, and what components or peripheral units does it connect to? Yeah, there's software at every level. So, uh, you know, all the way down to there's a battery management system. Batteries have to be babysat and box. fed box. and box. Yep, okay. down at the box. That then box. there's a control computer. The box. If you have multiple batteries, you have one control computer okay. telling all okay. those batteries what to do. That's all on site. And then you have a cloud layer that sees all the battery systems and is also talking to the utility. Box. Yep. <laughs> Another box. You understand what he's talking about, right? <laughs> Absolutely. It's all about the boxes. How does this look? You know, from the point of view of the utility, not everybody can do what Tad's doing. Not everybody can do what STEM's doing. And I know you guys don't, you know, don't take it, you know, lightly uh, when somebody comes in and tries to control the system and make everything work right. So you have a certain amount of, you know, confidence in him. Otherwise, he wouldn't be here, I think. So, am I right? I think she's trusting her software guys she, who are not here. She has here. the on-off switch. <laughs> she has a in and, uh, Actually, it, and I think this is a very important point, is that the partnership that we have with STEM in this pilot is to demonstrate that in order to do this kind of integration and the sophisticated integration of all of these behind the meter distributed storage systems, it takes the intelligence that he just explained so that it can be coordinated with the grid. If it's not coordinated and it's just Whoa. coming on and off, Whoa. there's a lot of <laughs> issues, right? And then yeah. it's all born on the back of the utility where right. we don't necessarily have that visibility down to the individual customers' homes. And Frankly, I don't think they want us to. So there is a little bit of um, kind of an interplay between our system and their system, and then also the customer who's really going to determine how that box, that storage device, is actually going to be forecasted and, and used. And then for our side, which is a grid responsive service, how we use all of them in an aggregate. And so we really need that avail status, availability, and control from their system. Wow, you know what, why do I, 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 I'm flying to Italy, okay, <laughs> and I go to the Sistine Chapel, and I see Michelangelo up there in the Sistine Chapel with the fingers touching, you know, that's what I see. Spark. This side is Hawaiian well, electric, that's, that's right. this side is STEM. It's just touch. <laughs> <And> touching, touching. <laughs> <laughs> you saw it here on Think Tank. It takes All a right. partnership. The utility and the technology companies do need to work together. We've got a big goal ahead, and and you can't do it without partnerships across that line. Oh, that's true. You know, and it's we're we're in a new territory. It's a frontier kind of thing, and the important thing is to make the consolidation really work. A collaboration, yeah. collaboration, <laughs> really work. Yeah. It's all three. <laughs> and so the, you, you guys are at the cutting edge, really, in terms of putting putting it all together. And I think until we do put it all together, we will not be able to reach Nirvana uh, or the Sistine Chapel. Uh, <laughs> so, Ray, what do you got to say? What kind of issues have you run into? I know you're really early in this mm -hmm. process, but what kind of issues did you not expect that you've run into? Well, with, with um, you know, there are issues across the board. There's always challenges in doing something new. And so with the customers, with commercial customers, a lot of the issue is around their expectations. Um, when we put batteries into buildings, commercial customers sometimes think they're going to have a backup battery. Um, they sometimes think that their bill will be cut in half overnight. And it's a lot more like energy efficiency, what we're doing. It's more like, hey, I put in a better light bulb. I saved a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have to do anything. I didn't give anything up. So, so setting folks' expectations about what that really is. The, the commercial systems that we do just, 
yeah, that, that's an expectation issue. Uh, home batteries are different. Home batteries, you might get battery backup. You might, you might be able to connect your PV system, and you couldn't without a battery. So there's, there's a real difference between what we do for commercial customers and what you're seeing with batteries in, in homes. So I, that's, that's probably one of the main things that we have to do is kind of educate our customers as we bring them along. Mm -hmm. But, but zoom out and go, go to the utility level now. You know, what it seems to me is that this is on the path to making a macro system that yep. utility can, can, by which it can integrate renewables uh, without a whole lot of risk, which is the job really in going forward. Um, so you're talking about one customer at a time, but I think Dora's talking about how do we make the whole, the whole enchilada work together, everybody, everybody together now, yeah. <laughs> and, and who's going to be making that dance work? Is it going to be you and then That's selling that product, ultimate product to the, to the utility, or is it going to be the utility orchestrating it all? Well, I think at the end of the day, the utility has still the responsibility for orchestrating it all and managing kind of the interactions from these distributed resources coming back. So it's up to kind of the, you know, the aggregators or the vendor partners that are providing us this information to give us that information in a timely fashion in the way that is responsive to the customer as well as our system needs. So it, it, it is a partnership. I, I don't think it's something that we can totally say, oh, STEM can do it alone. And frankly, it also includes the customer. So this requires customers' interaction as well because it's at their site. So it, it's a way to kind of bring that partnership not only with the utility, but the customers engaged in this process as well. Because every one of them, we went to them together and said, hey, we'd like to try this pro project. It can have um, savings for you, but it'll also help us manage the grid better. Mm -hmm. So they all signed up. And I think that was really, um, it's just, it was well, a that's very- That's a statement of confidence. Yes, it was a very it's nice- It's really a three-way partnership, isn't yeah. it? It's, it's you They're guys, engaged. plus it's the customers, and they got to buy yeah, in. Absolutely. And in our state, if they don't buy in, you know you got a headache. So you have to show them, you have to show them that it's going to work. It's, it's not going to hurt them. It's going to help them in some degree. Even if it doesn't provide battery storage overnight, there's still other benefits. And, you, you know, it's a spreadsheet affair. Good grid citizens. Being being a good grid citizen is part of what motivated a lot of these customers to be a BGC. part of this. BGC. BGC. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I also want to just mention, because the partnership goes beyond just the, the three-way. We also had a lot of assistance with the initial pilot with Hawaii um, Energy Accelerator, as well as the uh, U.S. Department of Energy Sunshot Program under our Seams for Shines project. So I think we're extending this not only on Oahu with our um, customer base, but also across our Maui Electric and Hawaii Electric Light systems as well. Yeah, You know, you, you asked about kind of impediments, and I think one is certainly that there's complexity to the utility to having small storage devices all over the grid and trying to use those. And so that's where STEM comes in, is we can say, okay, we're going to remove that complexity, we'll simplify it, we'll show you just the total. So you don't have to say, well, I want a little bit out of that battery and a little bit out of that one, a little bit out of that one. We'll figure out which batteries have how much, and we'll deal with that complexity. But where the utility does have complexity is we're not going to be the only aggregators. I'd love to say we are. That was my next question. But there will be others. So, you know, you have a partnership which is defined by a certain, what, geographical area or certain clients, I, I don't know if it's geographical or by client, um, but that does not exclude other aggregators from coming in. They will also have to get your confidence story. You're going to have to be happy with that. <laughs> um, but, but I see in this, this map we're drawing here, there's a number of STEM type organizations and they all have to follow certain protocols and standards. And you're, and, and really you said before, Ray said, who's going to manage this? Well, of course the utility can manage it. How else? You know, who else could do this? You are the center of all of this, as you have been, and you remain the center. <laughs> For 120 years. Yeah, you got it. Right? 125 years. <laughs> yeah, let's be accurate, shall we? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I mean, so, so yeah. as you see, I mean, I don't know, do you have other aggregators who are, may I say, competitors for STEM right now, uh, or do you see them coming in the future? How does that work? Yes, we, we do definitely see more of these intelligent devices with an aggregator that has the wherewithals to provide us the information to manage these systems. We are revamping our entire demand response program as part of the DER 2.0. So there's a lot more things coming 
and just under our pilot work that we're doing today, it's giving us the confidence that folks can do this. And I think we want to be able to show, you know, this partnership across the, the systems, including our partners, including our customers, can actually work. So what we're trying to do really is to develop the logistics, all the, all the technical issues to making this happen seamlessly and be able to encourage more um, kind of responsible Good citizens. Good citizens yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Responsible as well, <laughs> right? So that uh, we can we have we can have more responsive uh, distributed systems out on our on our grids. Well, I think it's it's really important to the uh, the whole initiative because this is like, you know, we've been through the whole next era thing. Uh, we've been through a lot of delay. We've been through I don't know what do you call it, momentum or confusion or whatever, and now. We're at the other side of, the, of, of that. We're coming out the other side. And this is a big thing. This is the kind of thing which will give people, you know, encouragement and will tell them things are going well and that we're, you know, th th there are other things too, I have to say, but <laughs> things are going well. And we're, getting, we're, we're, we're finding out how to do this now, bringing all the pieces together. It's a different kind of grid to have, to have resources out there at customer sites that can generate and can store energy in this distributed fashion. You think about the change in the computing system when you went from these central computers and you dial up over your tiny little, you know, 14 KB modem to have all that computing happen centrally and send you the, the answer you needed and now the internet is this, this web, you know, where the computing power is all at the edge and the same kind of metaphor extends to what we're seeing. So that really implies a transformation. You've got to have uh, thing, energy moving in, in two directions and, and someone's got to be managing that and, and balancing it and keeping the system stable. Um, there will be other technologies in there besides, you know, traditional batteries. There will be hot water heaters with new kinds of controls. Electric cars. Electric cars, smart homes with smart, with smart appliances. So there's going to be a lot more things out there that can respond to signals, but the coordination of all that uh, becomes the next challenge. And, oh. and we have to do this in a very secure fashion. So a lot of all this, this effort is essentially our model for developing yes. that future. Yes. All the security and all the interface to the customer site and all of their systems, we have to work this all out. And we are working this all out. So it's, it's really a positive direction and transformation. Yeah. And we have to let the public know. That's why we love when you guys come on the Think Tech <laughs> show here in Hawaii, the state of clean energy, the Energy Policy Forum, all that. And, you know, let them know they can watch this and, and get the idea about how the, these are pieces are knitting together. We're almost out of time, Ray. I hate to tell you this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do have a question for Dora, and I know she's, she's really smart. She's a PhD. She didn't say that when she came on, but she really knows this you know, stuff. That is something. So, an so, engineer is not necessarily a PhD. But, whoa. Uh, <laughs> right, right, right. So I, I have a lot of respect for her. And I was wondering, it, can you just look out three, maybe five years from now, if this thing kind of rolls along and does what we expect it to do, what kind of changes do you see from the utilities point of view? What, what will it be able to do five years from now if, uh, if we get it rolling that, that we're not able to do right now? I mean, what, obviously you guys are pushing very hard to work with these guys to make it happen so what, where are we headed yeah and, and take 30 seconds yes yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think I've written that grant to get the money to develop that crystal ball yet but um, no I, I actually do see us um, becoming more of that stable platform to allow what we kind of call the plug-and-play capabilities coming and we still need to maintain a 60 Hertz st stable grid for all of that to interact I mean, the 60 hertz thing is kind of like your pulse of your, your heart. If you don't have that, you're going to collapse, you know, just as a human body. So we don't want that to happen on the grid. And in the same sense, a lot of the partnerships that we are developing today and, and testing out the viability of these technologies and the transactions that's going to happen, that's what we need. And that's what we're going to probably be going towards the future for 100% renewables. Yeah, wow. Plug and play, modular. <laughs> Pulse, pulse, I can feel it now. <laughs> Dora, it's been great to have you. Dora Nakafuji, who on Electric, and Ted Glothier of STEM. Thank you, Ray. It was really a good discussion. Enjoyed it. We'll be back for more. You're going to come back soon. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having here. us. Thanks for having me on the show. Hello. Hello.